Welcome to Morning Manor with Apostle Juliana. Jesus is Lord. What a morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and surely you and I are going to rejoice and be glad in it. The Bible says, I was glad when they said unto me, Come, let us go to the house of God. It's a pleasure for us to meet as brethren. Ah, David says, I'd rather be a doorkeeper at my father's house. He said, This is the day he has made, and we are starting it within in his presence. The Bible says in his presence there is fullness of joy and it is right and there are pleasures forevermore. The kingdom of God includes the righteousness, joy in the Holy Ghost. As we start this morning, may the joy of the Lord be your portion. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this day you have made for us eh, to see and honor to be in it. Thank you, work us up this morning. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, eh, thank you for what you have made us in Christ Jesus. Now we are the children of God partakers and participators of your divine nature. We say thank you. We give you honor. We give you praise. For we are seated together with you in the heavenly places, far above principalities, powers. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, thank you, Father. You've made us kings and priests unto our God. We say thank you. We give you honor. We give you praise in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now we thank you, Lord. We are co heirs in the kingdom with the Lord Jesus Christ. We say thank you. We say thank you. We say thank you. We give you honor. We give you praise. Though we are in this world, we are not of this world. We say thank you. We say thank you for your love was shared abroad in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, thank you, saints, for joining me this morning. We are still talking about prosperity. And in this week, we are talking about our finances, managing our personal finances. And today, the topic I said, we are supposed to analyze our finances. We have to analyze our finances, to have a look at our finances. Analyze, analyze your finances. I'm supposed to look at my finances. You are supposed to look at your finances. Analyze your finances. Oh, glory to Jesus. You say, Apostle Jay, what is that? Why is that important? We are people of the Spirit. Why should we spend time analyzing your, our finances? Why should we spend time looking on what we have? Oh, glory to Jesus. It is important for us to know what we have. It is important to know what God has blessed us with. Because if you don't know what you have, you will not know how to spend and you will not know what to spend. It is just an encouragement to my brothers and my sisters that we must know what is our assets. We must know what do we owe. We must know what we don't have. As we know that we will know how to use to distribute so that we can grow. We will grow what needs to be grown. We will, we will reduce what needs to be reduced so that we, we not end up in, 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 in debt. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. So I want, if you have got somebody under the sound of my voice, we have to know what we have, what we owe, so that we can plan to pay off what we owe if we owe anyone. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. We must know what we have so that we can think ahead. We can do proper plan. I can plan for what I don't know. So we have to sit down and know what we have. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 13, verse 16. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 16. The Bible tells us, 
all who are prudent act with knowledge, but fools expose their folly. Thank you. All who are prudent act with knowledge. We have to know what we have. All those who are prudent act with knowledge. So it is important for us uh, to know what we have so that we can act with knowledge. Can we have message version there, men of God? Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus if we have God. Hallelujah. A common sense person live with good sense. You know, live with good sense. For litter, fools litter the country with selenesses. But, you know, it doesn't bring what I want to 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 put there. Let's go back to to NLT. Proverbs chapter thirteen, verse sixteen. A wise person, a wise person, uh, think before they act. Fools don't and even brag about their foolishness. A wise person, think before they act. So it is important that we have to make sure that we know. If you talk about thinking, we have to know the state of our finances. We have to analyze what we have. Hallelujah. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 21, verse 5. Let's just put NIV, Proverbs chapter 21, verse 7. The plan of the diligent leads to profit, but as surely as has leads to poverty. What am I saying? It is important for us to plan. I said analyze what you have. Don't just leave. I know we are people of the spirit. It's my burden for the church. I know we tell you, give, give, give. But there's a season to sit down. There's a season to check your financial status. And you know what? In this world, we are governed by money. Money is for this world. I think we established it so well on this series that we don't take money to heaven. But there are seasons we have to sit down and analyze. Because if we don't do the right thing, money will punish us. So what I'm trying to say this morning, we have to know what we have, we have to estimate what we don't have, and we have to make sure that we are diligent in what we do. The plan of the diligent leads to profit, and surely has leads to poverty. That's Proverbs 21 verse 5. The plan of the diligent leads to haste, um, lead to profit, pro profit, and then uh, surely has haste leads to Poverty. What am I saying this morning? It is good to sit down. When did you last sit down? Face your fears. The Bible tells us fear not. The Bible tells us be courageous. Things might not be in the right shape. Things are changing. The, the income might be changing. It might be going down. Things might not be moving okay. But ignoring it is not a, it's not, it's not the fact. You have to sit down. That's why we sit down. We go to God in prayer with exactly what we need help. The Bible tells us we should go to God to, with, to get well-timed help just when we need it. Don't give up on your finances, no matter what they look like. Sit down, go to God. The Bible says, ask and it shall be given unto you. But what are you asking? Sit down, know the state of your flock, so that when we go to God, even the, the, the debt is canceled. Even if there's a miracle for you to get income, you have to sit down so that the habits you have been living with, they don't take you back again to the state you are running away from. Oh, glory to Jesus, hallelujah. Glory to Jesus, hallelujah. So it is important for us to sit down. It is important for us to check where we are, hallelujah. It's not to condemn you. It's to know where we are. As we know where we are, God will help us to take us where we want to be. Oh, can I have an amen? Amen from the church. There's a place I desire. God wants us to prosper. God wants us to be in good health. God wants us to prosper. But why is, why is it it is important for us to sit up, to check where we are? Then we can go where we have to go. Hallelujah. So that if you sit down, we've got plan to all, to pay those we owe. Hallelujah. If we owe anyone, if you don't sit down, sometimes we won't plan to pay those we owe. Let's go to James chapter 5, verse 4 to 6. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Look, the wages you failed to pay the workers who mowed your field are crying out against you. The cries of the harvest 
have reached the ears of the Lord Almighty. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. You have lived on earth in luxury and self-indulgence. You have fattened yourself in the day of, the, of, of slaughter. Verse 6. You have condemned and murdered the innocent who won, who was not, who was not opposing you. Thank you. He says, the look, the wages you failed to pay. The workers have, have mowed your field, who have mowed your field are crying against you. The cries of the harvest have reached the ears of the Lord. What am I saying? You are expected to pay those who, things which are due for you. So we say, Lord, help us as we borrow at each other, as we sit down and analyze what you, we all have to pay. If it's the landlord you have to pay, you have to pay them. If it's, if, if it's if the clothes shop you borrowed clothes, you have to pay. Whatever you owe, we want to say, we sit down, we check what we owe, and we say, Lord, help us. Make, give us a plan so that we can, we can be people who pay what's due to us. Let's go to Proverbs. Let's go, I mean, to, to, to Proverbs chapter 30, verse 25 to 24 to 25. Ants are creatures of four things on earth are small, yet they're extremely wise. Hallelujah. Ants are creatures of little strength, yet they store up their food in summer. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's go to 26. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Haraxes are creatures of little power, yet they make their home in a crutch. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. What am I saying? Locusts have no king, yet they advance together in rank. The fourth one, hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. A lizard can be caught with the hand, yet it is found in king's palace. Amen. It talks about wisdom. Thank you. It talks about wisdom. The first creature which talks about wisdom then, it talks about the end. You know, we've been talking about the end. You know, you know, they say, you know, you know, it stores. They've got wisdom. So what we know, wisdom is very important as we live in finances. And wisdom is gotten in planning. Four things are small on earth, yet they're extremely wise. Ants are creatures little of little strength, yet they store their food for summer. Proverbs chapter, Proverbs chapter 30, verse 20, 24. What am I saying this morning? As we plan, wisdom will make you have. We don't need to have all the resources, but whatever God has given us, we want to say, Lord, give me ability to sit down. Give me ability to sit down so that I can see what I have to do with my finances. I'm still talking about analyzing our finances and why we must analyze our finances. Oh, glory to Jesus, glory to Jesus. When we analyze our finances, we really plan to pay up those we owe. If you don't plan your finances, definitely you will remain in bondage. So, you know, as we plan, as we analyze our finances, we put what we owe, on, on one place, we put also what we have on another place, what we need to reduce on expenses on another, on another, uh, on another, on another place. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. We check and we know which one, number one, is wise spending, which one is unwise spending, which one is, which one is, uh, which one is wise spending, unwise spending. On, and also, which one is unplanned spending? I was looking for that word. Oh, glory to Jesus. And when we analyze our finances, what do we do? We tend to God for help. We know exactly what is my income? What do I owe? What is my net worth? What do I have? If I've got nothing, it's okay. We save God of the impossibility. But we must know the state of our flock. The Bible tells us in the book of Matthew, that, you know, if a man wants to build a city, there's a season of sitting down. When they sit down, 
they check the cost so that they can finish building. The other scripture tells us about the prodigal son. He said when he had gone and things were not well with him, the Bible says he came to his senses. Then he remembered that his father had riches and he was feeding servants. We have got a father in heaven. We don't need to despair. We don't need to run away. We don't need to commit suicide no matter how things are. But there's a process we need to take so that we can be restored. So analyzing our financial status is not a place for us to be depressed. It's a place for us to call God to give us strategy, new ways for us to go to the next level. So we turn to God for help. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Let's go to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 3 to 6. I mean 13 verse 5. Sorry. The verse 5 to 6. Verse 5, keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. Hallelujah, glory to Jesus. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortal do to me? Thank you. Hallelujah. I'm encouraging you. That, you know, as we look at the state of our finances, we continue go to going to God. He's faithful. He's our helper. He says, come all who are heavy laden and I will give you rest. I command rest in our lives. Strategies from God as we talk about our finances. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. He always promises well-timed help, appropriate help, just when we need it. Hallelujah. When we analyze our finances, we know that we see what we owe. Then we deliberately avoid unnecessary debt. We avoid unnecessary debt. We avoid going too deep and deep in debt. We avoid unnecessary debt. Let me say that again. There is unnecessary debt which we can avoid. You know you can do without it because we we end up being slaves to those whom we owe. Let's go to Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Do nothing out of selfish ambition and vain conceit, rather in humility. Value others above yourself. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. When we are doing whatever we are doing, hallelujah, we just have to do in humility. You know, this is who I am. I don't need to show to anyone what I'm not. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Can you put a TPT version for me, man of God, if you have got? Hallelujah. There is a place where we have to understand it. Be free from pride, filled opinion, for they will only harm your cherished unity. Don't allow self-promotion to hide in your heart, but in authentic humility. Put others first and view others more important than yourself. Thank you, man of God. Authentic humili humility. Be humble. This is me. Hallelujah. This is you. Hallelujah. I don't need to do anything in competition. I end up taking death just to prove myself. This is me. Sometimes things don't work. If my friends and my family sees my nakedness, if they see what I can do, it's okay. It's a season. He's a God of seasons. I don't need to do what I can do. When things are not going on, on well, I don't need to necessarily go out of my way, which it will be dangerous for me. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Why we need to analyze your finances so that you can budget your spending. I know we are busy on all the platform. Twitter, we are busy. TikTok, we are busy. Facebook, but have time. Be busy on your spending. Hallelujah. There is no excuse. No excuse. Make sure that you control your budget. We're going to talk about budgeting another time as God allows us in this series. You know, we have to make sure that we have to budget our spending. Don't just spend. Budget. Don't spend what you don't know. Sit down and count your cost. If you're in debt, Commit to come out of debt because as you come out of debt, you know, you get more money. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. If you are in debt, hallelujah. I said, if you are in debt, 
Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. So what am I saying to us this morning? It is important for us to sit down, count, check what do I have. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. What don't I have? Hallelujah. What do I need to cut on? What do I need to increase? Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. What do I need to give? Can I say something to somebody under the sound of my voice? There is whatever now we talk about giving. There is foolish giving. There is sensible giving. Oh, apostle, how can you say there's foolish giving? Yes, there is foolish giving, which is emotional giving. You give according to the mood of the moment. You are invited to a wedding. Everyone, you know, where I come from in my culture, they will call you the relatives of the wives, the relatives of the husbands. They will say, oh, they've given 20,000 US dollars. You are under pressure. You know as a family when $200, what do you do? You go to the MC, you tell them, eh, you know, also put $20,000. You know it's not there. That's foolish giving. Hallelujah, glory to Jesus. Take time to investigate, to investigate the cause of your giving. Pray to God, hallelujah, glory to Jesus. Also, learn to say no. When people come and ask, some people, they work hard, but money is just borrowed by friends, relatives, people around, not to go to cover their things. Take time to say no aggressively. What you can't afford, say no. Hallelujah, glory to Jesus. We give what we have, not what we don't have. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Don't give so that you won't be guilt. I'm going to talk about your money and your emotions. Don't give to, for, to feel a void in you. You know, don't give to feel a void in you. Hallelujah, glory to Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So we have to give for the right purpose. Don't give for the wrong purpose as we pray. That's what I say, foolish giving. Hallelujah, glory to Jesus. Hallelujah, glory to Jesus. Then there's sensible giving. When you have sensible giving, is the amount you have budgeted for. We are going to travel this far. We are going to go for a holiday. Our budget is 500 rand. We are going to live in a house for 500 rand. Don't be excited when you're at that beach. You see an empty hotel for 1,000 rand. You change your bags, your bags and do go to that room. I mean, spend what you budgeted for. If this month you are going to be having vegetables the whole month, we are going to be vegetarian. We are going to stick to that budget. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So ask who to give and not to give. Hallelujah. Say no to some kind of asking. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. I don't know if I'm making sense to somebody under the sound of my voice. Glory to Jesus. It is important that we give, but it is important that we've got goals. We've got vision. We've got planning. We have to plan what we have to give. We have to plan where we want to go. Hallelujah. Let's go to Matthew chapter 14, verse 26. Hallelujah. Also, Luke chapter 14, verse 26. Luke chapter 14, verse 26. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife, children, brother, sister, yes, their lives on their own, such a person cannot be my disciples. Let's go on. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. And whosoever does not carry their cross and follow me can be, cannot be my disciple. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't they first sit down and estimate the cost to see if they have enough money to, com uh, to complete it? If, so if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish it, everyone will see it and will ridicule you, saying this person began a building and was not able to finish. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. We can go on. Or suppose the king is about to go to war against another king. Won't they sit down? My emphasis is sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against with 20,000. Hallelujah. Verse 32, if he is not able, he will send a delegation 
while well, there are still a long way off and ask for a time of peace. Number 33. Hallelujah. In the same way, those of you who do not give up everything, you have cannot be my disciple. Hallelujah. I just want to, to pick something from what our Lord Jesus said there. He said, if a king knows that you know he has got 10,000 soldiers and the one coming to fight with him has got 20,000, what does he do? He analyzes his situation. He go and look for peace before destruction comes. When we look at our finances, we see our state, maybe what we are not able to pay for now, maybe what we need to reduce on, we analyze when there's time. When there's time, we talk to people, we ask so that we won't be in danger. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. So it, can, so it is important for you to sit down. Sit down alone if you are married. Sit down with your family you know, so that you know what's happening, where you analyze. So what do we do? So when we go to pray, we pray with precision. We know which strategy to check what you have you to do so that the wisdom of God will work for us. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. When we analyze, we know what our assets, what our liability. Eh, what we have more, what our assets, what our liability. When we analyze, we we'll know what we are spending. What is my spending? What am I spending? So when we analyze, we we'll know what is my net worth. If we talk about net worth, you know, I know you went to school better than me. You know, we are making a list of your assets. Make a list of your liability. Don't lie to yourself. It's the most dangerous thing to do in life. You know, list your assets. List your liability. Hallelujah. See which one is greater huh? or which one is lesser. After that, we don't give up. We don't despair. We don't run away from ourselves. What do we do? We've got a laughing father. You give us strategy on how to do what we will do. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. When we analyze, we sit down. We say, Lord. We want to make more income, want to make more resources to flow our way. So we sit down, we write down, how can I increase my income? Maybe I've been retrained, maybe business is going low, maybe the business I've been doing is not working. So when we sit down, we pray for God so that God will give us more source of income. So that we also see, you know, we also we, we put down our source of in income, then also we check, we put down our expenses. Our expenses include our day-to-day -day living. It includes our giving, our debt, and our taxes. Our expenses is also including school fees, whatever we need to do. Then we say, Lord, help us so that we can increase our cash flow. Hallelujah. We have got more way to get finances in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Sometimes our cash flow will be negative. Knowing that nothing is coming our way. What do we do? Our father is not a father of barrenness. You bring in rivers, you know, even in the desert. When there is a negative income, we find a way of increasing our income. When there's negative income or reduced income, what we reduce our expenses. When there's negative income, if you've got a saving, you can use your savings so that things can can, can can be better. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. So what am I saying this morning? We have to sit down, analyze our finances. I think we are going to go to go to part two tomorrow. You know, goals about our income, goals about what, uh, what to expense. It's important. Hallelujah. I say this in, to the body of Christ. It's important for us as believers to master this. It is important for us for God to give us wisdom in this in Jesus name. Father thank you for those who are under the sound of my voice in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The ability, the grace to sit down, to look at the state of our flock. As we sit down, as we look at the state of, state of our flock, thank you for ability to know what to do, what to reduce, what to increase. Father thank you for coils are coming our way so that we can be cleared up on what we lack. Coils are being flown in our in our manner is coming our way so that they can be provisioned. Yeah, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides. 
Thank you for providing, Lord. Father, thank you. Let us not be, thank you, Lord, for you're here to take us out. You know, you make a way where there seems to be no way. We come against depression. We come against deep disappointment. Father, thank you, Lord, for your claim headed people who will get strategies from Jehovah and will make it in this season. God bless you and good morning. See you tomorrow morning. Jesus is Lord. You are God, oh, oh, oh. We worship you. Only you are God in heaven and on earth. We worship you because you are God, oh. That is why we worship. Not just because of the things you have done, oh. We worship because you are Contest it. You alone are God.